Hi. Um, I've been asked um, a few times about what changes we've made to the remote control marks for our model boat racing. So I thought I'd just quickly go through some of the things that we've done. Uh, this is the original, uh, which was made out of wood. It's 3.2 mil plywood, soaked in the bath for a few hours and then bent in a circle. Um, and in the centre, of course, is where the um, anchor weight goes down. And we use, um, this has worked quite well. And the whole thing was quite successful. I'll show you the bits and pieces in a minute. But the motors that we used were, these were two, of, there's a, the weed guard is gone from that one. But uh, the motors that I used for them were from bait boats. And they're this sort of thing here, which you can buy from AliExpress or Banggood and all sorts of places. Very cheap, not a problem. They're designed for a bait boat, uh, designed to slide up through the bottom of the of the uh, boat. That's not a problem. And they worked, but they have a problem. The joint between the where the prop shaft goes into the main body, it actually is reasonably watertight when the prop is turning. And of course, if you're using it as a bait boat, Basically, you put it in the water, you send it out, dump your bait in your line, and then bring the boat back and take it out of the water. But for our case, this goes out to wherever it's going to sit, and it sits there for an hour, an hour and a half, or however long we're racing, and then we bring it back. And as I discovered fairly quickly, these are not waterproof um, when they're just sitting, doing nothing. When it's revolving, not a problem. We don't seem to get any water in. When it's not revolving, it leaks like a sieve and these things, water gets into this and destroys the motor. So these didn't work. So we had to get rid of them. But what a full mark looked like was something like this. And um, We have the two motors coming up through the bottom here. Uh, let me just get something to point that with. Yes, yeah, something down in here. These are the two motors coming up through uh, the base and it's completely sealed there. So the top of that um, little entry there where the wire goes into it is above waterline. Even if water did get in, not a problem. Um, that's our spool. There's uh, the motor here that winds the spool back up. Uh, which is just a servo which has had the um, guts removed and is now just a motor and this servo here lifts the whole thing up um, and the way that works is well, this is a little sub thing here these two um, gears are in mesh and when we lift this up um, it removes the mesh and that allows the anchor to drop down the anchor is just um, a two pound 900 gram fishing weight so it drops down anchors the thing and we lock it off by bringing that back down not a problem but it leaked like a sieve so the first thing that i thought about was well we have to get different motors and we have to put them inside so <coughs> there was well there are other problems with it too it wasn't really particularly fast and it ended up quite heavy uh, those ones were about three and a half kilograms, um, seven, seven and a half pounds weight, and that gave us a problem uh, because it wasn't very um, quick. So if we're going into trying to drive them into any sort of breeze or anything like that, uh, it was not so much a no-go, but it was very slow. So I wanted to reduce the weight, wanted to increase the performance, and I wanted to keep it waterproof. So I came up with the idea of doing a 3D printed mark. So this was our first attempt at a 3D printed mark. Um, and in this case, the whole thing is 3D printed and I had to teach myself how to use CAD software. I had to learn how to use FreeCAD. I was really very proud of these little nacelles that the motors are inside and the prop shaft coming out to here and weed guards. So inside this, Basically, everything is enclosed. The only hole in the bottom of the whole thing is where the prop shaft goes through, and that was sealed off. And the problem we had with this 
these are bloody leaks. So the prop shaft, we couldn't get a prop shaft, and I did try a couple of different prop shafts, but I couldn't get them to stop leaking. So whether they're running or not running, these were just pouring water into the nacelles, filled up, were filling up, and anyway would have destroyed the motors if we'd let it go on. So this didn't work. So what do we do? So what we thought then was that the best idea was, if we look at this side on, instead of having, um, because this is all, it, the water um, level is about here. So instead of having the prop shaft do that, we have the prop shaft come in and point upwards to a motor and have the top of the prop shaft above the water level. And then it didn't matter if water get under the prop shaft, it wouldn't get into the inside body of the of the mark and destroy the motors. But to get it to fit inside this, this is 280 mil wide, uh, just under a foot. And to get it to um, the prop shaft up to high enough so we had room to put the motor in behind it and come down to this, then the angle ended up quite heavy. So we had to think again. So what we came up with was the idea of putting the prop shaft prop shaft coming out here and putting um, a spur gear into this and driving it up inside and having the motor above it driving down through a prop shaft two little spur gears working at 90 degrees to each other and then the prop out the back and then that would socket into a socket inside the main body and that would be well above water level, so we're not going to get water in. So that's what we did. So to show you the current working model. So just take the lid off here. Uh, the lid is watertight. There is a, a slot here with a, a neoprene rubber uh, seal in it so that um, we can actually make the whole body completely watertight. And here we basically have the same thing again. <coughs> Everything is modular. Um, where the, the prop shafts or these um, sockets come through is down here and here. And they come up and then the motor is right above them. So it's actually sitting right up in, in near the top of the, of the mark. And if we look at it sideways now, you can see that the prop shaft comes in, the there's a little spur gears are in a little gearbox room here, and then the prop shaft goes directly up to the motor. So this the bottom of this look is a lot cleaner now, and it also means that it prints quicker um, on the 3D printer. So let's just look at what we have. Uh, this is all modular. The the um, winch system here. I've changed it slightly so instead of the whole winch system pivoting we have a, an arm here which uh, carries the winch um, servo and in fact to drop the anchor we just lift that arm up and it disengages and then the winch the anchor can run out and then we to lock it we just clip it back in again and lock these two together and it doesn't go anywhere there's a break on this so that's the way this now works and it's it has worked out at two and a half kilograms instead of three and a half kilograms. So it does go much better. Uh, the motors are very slightly bigger. They're 380 um, motors. Um, they're running from um, one LiPo uh, two cell um, battery, a 3800 milliamp battery and some cheap. Um, I think these cost less than two dollars US each these electronic speed controllers, two for the motors and one for the winch motor. And um, I'm using a fly sky receiver and, and transmitter for this. And right at the top here, when the winch um, winds the anchor back up, um, there's a second tube here. These are all well above uh, water level. There's a second tube here, which has basically um, it's actually a cocktail, a skewer, a wooden skewer going down in. And when the anchor comes back up into its hole, it pushes this up and it pushes this micro switch, which cuts off the power to the um, winding winch. 
and that means that we don't burn this thing out and it just stops winding and we can move it off again everything here is modular um, I'm going to show another I'm doing another video of me putting the thing together which will show a little bit more detail but the um, little bracket here that holds the ESCs and receiver it pops out the two uh, nacelles with the engine or the two, um, they can be unbolted and taken out and the actual whole winch system is held in with one uh, bolt here so it can be taken out and worked on and in fact this cover for the anchor well these three um, knobs here can be unscrewed and that can be taken out so the whole thing can be taken out um, for maintenance so that's where we are at the moment um, this is the first one that we made um, finished about a week or so ago I've had it out twice now um, using it in earnest and um, very pleased with it it does go faster and it's not exactly the most um, hydrodynamic thing in the world, but when it is moving, um, we do occasionally get it underwater at either end. This thing here is just to, so we can lift it out with a hook because um, we can't get alongside it at our place where we sail. And um, everything works. So happy days. And I'll post another video very soon about actually assembling all this and how it all goes together and how it works. Steering is all very simple. It's just a simple, it's all in one. We can go left, we can go right, we can go forward, and in fact, we can have to go back. And when I want to get round to dropping the anchor, I have the anchor lock servo on switch D on the fly sky, so I'll just bring the thing right close. And to drop it, all we do is press this one, then lock it again, and it's anchored. And I can hold that in with this, or I can pay out. So that's the two way switch she's used for that. So let's just hold it down again. Just about to see the anchor coming off the bottom now and coming up into the body of the mark. And it'll switch itself off. But once I know it's up, I'll just leave that back in the new position. So that's lock and drop and haul and pair it.